Welcome to this ASP.NET Core Tree Grid Control Tutorial. The Syncfusion ASP.NET Core Tree Grid Control is used to effectively visualize self-referential or hierarchical data in a tabular format. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to add the tree grid control to an ASP.NET Core web application. I'll also show you how to configure this control along with its basic features like binding data, customizing columns, and enabling paging, sorting, and filtering. Let's start with the ASP.NET Core web application creation. Make sure you have installed one of the following versions of the .NET SDK on your machine. Now I'll use .NET 8.0 framework. You also need to install one of the IDEs. In this video, I'll use Visual Studio 2022. First, I open Visual Studio 2022 and choose Create a New Project from the dashboard. I select the ASP.NET Core Web Application from the template. Next, I'll provide details like name and location. I'll create the project with the .NET 8.0 framework. The project has been created and is ready to use. Now I will show you the step-by-step -step process for adding Syncfusion ASP.NET Core Tree Grid. I open the NuGet Package Manager, search for the Syncfusion EJ2 ASP.NET Core Package, and install it in my application. After the package is installed, you can find it under the Packages section. I open the View Imports Razor file and import the Syncfusion EJ2 tag helper. Next, to add the style and script reference, I navigate to the Layout CS HTML page and add a Syncfusion CSS style reference using the CDN link. Then I add the script reference for the Syncfusion ASP.NET Core controls and register the script manager using the EJS scripts tag at the end of the body section. I need to register the Syncfusion license to avoid the license validation message. So I open the program CS file and register the license key using the register license method. To see where to generate a trial license key, check the description below. To add a tree grid control, I navigate to the index CS HTML page, add the EJS tree grid tag, and set the ID attribute. To see the basic layout of a tree grid, I need to bind a data source. Let me demonstrate how to populate a tree grid with hierarchical data. I can bind local or remote data to the tree grid using the data source property. I navigate to the controller page, create a model class tree grid data, and add fields like task ID, task name, start date, and more. Then I add the get default data method. and define the hierarchical data. Look at this data, it contains parent and child task details. In the index page, I define a variable, task data, and call the get default data method from the tree grid data model class. Now, assign the task data variable to the data source property of the tree grid. Now, I need to map the child records using the child mapping property. Here, I map the children data source field. Also, set the tree column and x property to 1 to have an expand button in the task name column. Let me run this application by pressing the F5 key. Check, a tree grid is now rendered with hierarchical data. I can collapse and expand the parent tasks. Look here, 
The column names are displayed as they are in the data source field names. You can customize the field name and display only required columns using eTree Grid Columns and eTree Grid Column Tag Helper. I add the eTree Grid Columns tag to specify the details for a list of columns. Then add the eTree Grid Column tag to customize a single column. Many options are available to customize the tree grid columns, but I will show you a few now. I add the field property and map the task ID field from the data source. Add the header text property and set its value to task ID and align the column data by setting the text align property to right. Then customize the default column width using the width property. In the same way, I define other fields. Apply the date format to the start date column by setting a format property to YMD. Apply the same format to the end date column. See how each column now displays a custom header. The task ID column data is right aligned, and the date format is applied to the start date and end date columns. Next, I will show you how to enable a few basic features like paging, sorting, and filtering. First, I will start with the paging feature. To enable a page tree grid, set the allow paging property to true. Check the tree grid, the pager is added. Now I will show you how to enable sorting. I set the allow sorting property to true. Check the tree grid. When I click the task name column header, data is sorted in ascending order. When I click the column header again, it sorts the column in descending order. A third click on the same column header clears the sorting. Finally, I will show you how to enable filtering. I set the allow filtering property to true. Check the tree grid. The filter box is shown, and I can type any text to filter the tree grid records. Now, let me quickly summarize. I have shown you how to create an ASP.NET Core web application and add a tree grid control with a few basic properties. You can download a working example from the GitHub link shared in the description below. You can also see if you're eligible for our community license, which will get you a free license key to use our products. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.